Okay, let's um, take this program that simulates one wave uh, over, uh, as a function of time here and simulate multiple waves at the same time uh, as well as their superposition, which would just be the sum of all of the uh, wave components there. So um, we need to do a couple things here. I'm going to take this dt value and move it up with the x points because it's kind of defining it's not actually defining the function itself it's just defining kind of the parameters of our simulation um, and what we need to do is uh, is we need to make a whole bunch of these inputs so we need an amplitude a phi and a frequency and a wave number for however many waves we want to simulate at the same time and we also want to be able to simulate you know, a, a variable amount of waves at the same time. So instead of just copying this, say, five times and always being able to simulate five waves, we want to choose whether we want to simulate one wave or two waves or ten waves. And so it's not immediately obvious how to do that because we have to kind of have all of our inputs showing on our front panel at the start. So how many times should we copy this variable? How many times should we copy this sine function here? Uh, so we're actually going to make a different type of data that, um, oops, change the value of our stop condition there. Just trying to move it out of the way. Um, we want to, instead of making this these single inputs, we want to kind of bundle all of these together into a cluster and then make an array of these clusters that can be of any length, just like we made a list of X points earlier that could be of any length. So let me show you what I mean. We're going to have to modify our make uh, make sign here again. It's no big deal. Um, so if I go in here into our sub VI, which has our uh, sign function generation, our wave equation generation, um, you can see all of these you know controls here are separate inputs. Um, let me reorganize this. Time is not one of the function parameters, but here are the function parameters. Um, and I want to bundle all these together into one piece of data called a cluster. So there's a couple different ways to do that. Um, easiest way probably is I'm just going to right click go to this array matrix and cluster palette, make a just empty cluster there on the front panel. And what you can do is just drag um, any of these other controls in there. And it will bundle them together. Um, I'm going to call this wave parameters. And on your block diagram, you can see it broke the block diagram. It broke all of these wires because now we don't have those individual controls anymore. They're all bundled together. Um, but we still want to use those values, obviously, to compute our, our wave there. So we need to just unbundle it first. So if I go to cluster, class, and variant, um, I can unbundle. Uh, I actually want to unbundle by name just because it's a little bit easier to tell what's what. So when I unbundle it there, I can drag that down and you can see all of those different controls that I put into that cluster. And I can rewire those to all of the broken wires here that have appeared in my program. So there's the amplitude, there's phi, there's k, and there's f. Um, and I could even reorganize these if I wanted to, I probably should. Um, just so there's not all these crossed wires here. So let's let's do that. Let's actually delete these wires I just added. K is on top, so let's make that top uh, wire K, then F, then Phi, and then A. And now I don't have to cross any of these wires. So... There we go. Um, and I'm just going to, this is a pretty simple program, so I'm just going to do the auto cleanup button there. Make this look a little nicer. This program should still work fine. 
However, on our main program where we're using this sub VI, all of our wires broke. Um, of course they did because we changed, uh, we got rid of them. We have just this cluster now. And actually in our sub VI here, we do need to go onto the front panel and wire this wave parameters input up to a, uh, to a terminal, give that a terminal, an input terminal. So that in our main program, we have this wave parameters terminal that we can just create a control for. And I just can delete all these individual ones now. I don't need them. There we go. So does it still work? If I change all these values. Yeah, we can still simulate. Still seems to respond the way it should. Um, we've just tidied things up a little bit. And we've made it, making this a, uh, a cluster now means that we can make an array, a list of, instead of just single numbers, of this cluster. So if I go to array, matrix, and cluster, put down a empty array, instead of making a list of, of numbers, I'm just going to drag this cluster into that array. And now, I've got an array of these clusters. So if we want to plot one sine wave, we can just fill out one of these clusters. And if we want to plot two sine waves, we can do two and, and so forth and, and so on. Um, down here, what we want to do now, it's broken our wire again because the input is a single cluster, not an array of clusters. But all we need to do to make it our program plot a whole bunch of different sine waves is add a different loop for loop this time um yeah that's fine i just I put this over the eye of the other loop here um let me just dig that out there we go and remember if you wire a array up to the edge of a for loop it will auto index. It will take one, uh, one element of that array at a time, starting with the first one, then the second and the third, every time this loop runs. And I can wire that into the wave parameters because now when you go into the array, into the loop, you get a single one of these clusters at a time instead of all of them at once. Um, and, uh, and, but the problem is now, even though we're calculating a bunch of different sine waves here, um, we're only plotting like the last one we calculate. We want to have multiple plots on our graph here. Um, so the way that we need to do that is we need to have an array of these clusters. So you might be noticing the pattern is that if you, you don't want to have a, if you have a whole bunch of the same thing, then it, you know, you can, you can make that an array. Um, and, uh, so we need to make, we need to make a different set of clusters here for each, um, sine wave. And actually that's really easy to do because we can just take our XY graph outside of our wave loop here and we'll make a cluster, uh, we'll make a different function every time this loop runs. By default, it's gonna auto index into an array and we can just wire that into our XY graph. And it um, should work now. Uh, we need values here. So let's do one, one, one. Let's make this one, um, one, two, one run our program and you can see we do have two separate uh, waves being simulated there they're traveling at different speeds here um, let me just as I did before get rid of these scale lines because they kind of make it hard to see the the, um, the functions we're plotting but you can see we've got the white and red uh, uh, functions there they're a little bit blocky because they don't really have enough points. Let's do a thousand points instead of a hundred. There we go. That's a lot smoother.
So now we're simulating two waves. Um, we can change the amplitude to one. We can even add, you know, a third wave here. There we go. So it's starting to get kind of hard to, it's trying to get messy, but we can simulate as many waves as we want. If we want to go down, get rid of some of these, we can right click, delete the element. Right click, delete the element. Um, so awesome, we can simulate as many waves as we want because we've we've taken advantage of this auto indexing uh, kind of attribute of loops and arrays. And instead of just calling this array, I'm just gonna call this, um, uh, you know, all, all waves or something like that. Doesn't matter. Um, okay, but now what we need to do is we want to also calculate the superposition of all of these waves, which is just the sum of all of their y values. Okay, it's a little bit trickier, but not, uh, not too complicated. How are we going to do that? So, uh, what we need to do is, is we need to be able to um, take the y value from each iteration and add it to the y value of the previous iteration and keep like a running sum of all of these y values. Um, and to do that, you wire it to the edge, and by default, it's going to auto-index, so it's going to actually make an array of, of arrays, which is a two-dimensional array. We don't worry about that yet. Uh, we want to do a different type of exit terminal of this loop. We want to right-click on it and go to tunnel mode, uh, or not tunnel mode. We want to do shift register, replace with shift register. And what that'll do is make these little arrows. And what this does is the value that is passed to the right shift register is passed to the previous shift register for the next iteration of the loop. So whenever you need to use inf information inside of a loop from the previous iteration of the loop, you need to use a shift register. And um, we actually want to take the previous iteration and add the uh, the current iterations y values. So those are the y values of our of our wave of our of our single wave, um, and we want to add to it the y values of the previous iteration, and that will kind of keep a running sum of the superposition of all of the waves. Um, the only thing is we need to we need a start value. Because for the first time you run this loop, there's there's no previous iteration, so you need to have a kind of default start value here. So we're just going to make an array that it has all zeros in it to start adding things to. Um, easiest way to do that: go to array, initialize array. This is the value of all of the elements in that array, which we just want to start as zero. And um, this is the size of the array which is going to be however many points there are. That's how many y values we're going to have in it. So this is going to make a array of point size. So right now, a thousand different elements in this array. All the values are going to start at zero. And then we are going to add each of our waves to this each time. We'll get our total superposition over here. And um, we can bundle that uh, that y value with our x values, which is going to be the same um, for all of our functions. So the x values we don't need to add together because it's always going to be over the same range, the same points. So I'm just going to take our x values from inside the loop and wire it into here. You can see, again, by default, it's auto-indexed. So we've made this thicker two-dimensional array, which is not what we want. We just want the x values from any single iteration of this loop, not all of them. And to do that, you just right click on that tunnel mode and go to last value. So whatever the value of these x points is, um, the last time this loop runs is what we're going to use there. So make sure you know the difference between last value, auto indexing, and shift register. They're all very common ways to uh, go in and out of loops. So this is going to be our superposition. 
we want to plot this on the same xy graph so how do we add this to the array um, we've only ever made arrays before by auto indexing so we want to insert a new plot into our array of plots if I go to array insert into array I can oops don't want to do that I can take our array and um, I'm gonna the index is where in the array you want to insert the new element um, I want to insert it at the very beginning of the array so that our superposition is always the very first plot in our set of plots here. So that is index 0. And there's our new element. Wire that in. That has to be the same data type as all the other um, elements in the array, which is um, a bundle of x and y points. And I'll wire that into the XY graph. So let me just add labels to these so you know what sub VIs I used here. Just to make it a little bit clearer. And um, I think it should be working now. So let's try it. Let's do a superposition. Let's simulate a standing wave. So a standing wave is occurs when you have two waves superimposing that are identical but traveling in opposite directions. The easiest way to make this travel in an opposite direction is just to make the frequency negative. Um, okay, so let's run it. There we go. So now the white plot is the superposition and the red and green are our two components here. You can see the red one and green ones are the same size. The red one is moving to the right. The green one is moving to the left at the same speed, same frequency, same uh, wave number, um, just going in opposite direction. And so you can see that the white superposition isn't going back and forth at all. It's a standing wave. It's only going up. It's only increasing and decreasing in amplitude here, not moving through space. So there you go. That's how you make the wave simulator here. There's all sorts of cool things that you can do with this. Um, uh, that maybe we'll get into into the next video here.